I'm going to read a quote here. I consider him one of the best fighters of all time. He had a sense of class about him, which, ab which I absolutely loved. He wasn't your typical boxer. Yeah. When you hear that from Michael Jordan, what does that make you think? Man, that's big. Anything coming from Mike, that's Mike. <laughs> you know, Mike don't comment on everybody. Mm -mm. So, you know, and that's one of the reasons why he signed me, and Mike don't sign everybody. So it's, it's big, man. I appreciate it. And I'm comfortable, man, with the legacy I left, you know, in the ring. Absolutely. Um, if they would have caught me a couple of years before, they probably would have got the other guy they was looking for. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, the, the turn up and all of that. They probably would have got that. But, you know, for me, man, God have brought me through a lot. And I was still changing. Even when I turned pro, I was still in the process of becoming. You know what I'm saying? And... I had seen a lot of that stuff growing up, you know, and I don't knock nobody and how they get down. But for me, I was like, man, I'm a fierce competitor. You're not going to step on me in no promotion or nothing like that, no press conference. But I'm going to try to do this in a classy way. You're going you're gonna to feel feel right. my presence, but I'm going to try mm -hmm. to do this in a classy way. Your way. The way I felt like God yeah. wanted me to do it. Right. Because at the end of the day, I knew my career was going to be over at a certain point in time. And I'm not trying to build this monster that I gotta live with now and, and, and retire. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm, you know what I'm saying? I, I dropped my kids off at school. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm able to still do business. Me and you talk about it all the time, mm -hmm. doing business and, mm -hmm. and these projects and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I wanted to have a life outside of this sport. And sometimes the sport wants you to crash out and they don't care what happens nope. to you after. At, so, at all. At all. So I've been able to make a great living outside of boxing, then retire six years now. And I ain't took it through a punch in six, six years. Mm -hmm. That's what that was the goal. Mm, that was tough. the goal. Jordan, uh, let's talk about Jordan because I'm under, I'm under Jordan too. But who's your rep? Reggie was was one of my reps. Uh, Mark Ravlin. So for me, that was growing up not being able to afford him and have been sponsored by Jordan. That was the best feeling, Man. one of the best ones I ever had in life. Man, talk about it. Getting them boxes. Man, <laughs> I had him elite. <laughs> Listen, bro. You still get them? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I need to find your rep because yeah. I ain't got a box in about four months. Yeah, hey. <laughs> this motherfucker's back hey, hunting the boxes. Larry, Larry Miller, that's my brother, man. Larry said, man, you a Jordan athlete for life. Yeah. I said, Larry, I'm going to hold you to it. I'm going to hold I'll, you to I'll it. I always hold him to it, too. <laughs> yeah, but, man, like, I don't know what it is with me. And shoes always was a shoe person. Mm -hmm. I look at your shoes first and I look at everything else. You can tell a lot. Some clean shoes, tell a lot. Bro, you can yeah. tell a lot. That, that I just, I used to call my grandmother, Grammy, what shoes you got on? I just, that's how I always was. And my dad used to tell me, he said, this boy ever get some money, he'll have a whole lot of shoes. <laughs> Dudes and I do. clean shoes, it's just like looking at a woman with open toe shoes on, and nice her feet ain't nails. done. Mm. Nah, her feet ain't done. Oh, they beat up. That's but, say a lot. But that, but that's also the culture in the Bay, too. Like, we'll have some, some Jordans on, and some regular jeans and a white t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as your shoes clean, yeah. you all right. You're good. You all right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's <laughs> the same way today. How did the conversation and the deal come together for the Jordan thing? And what was that first conversation with Mike like? Did you almost pass out when you met him? Man, I was, I don't get in, I don't really like get in awe with a lot of people. I and, almost passed and out. And not from a disrespectful standpoint. I right. just, you know, it's like, oh, that's so-and-so, that's mm -hmm. cool. But Mike is different. Mike is different. <laughs> Mike got an aura about him. Like, and he not even trying, he just Mike. Yeah, he ain't trying. So. They had just, you know, they had, they, I was on their radar and it was a lot of, you know, back and forth and they had sent me a couple boxes and stuff like that. And it was a lot of talking, but you know, it was a couple years of that. And then, then we finally locked in a deal. But Mike, man, he got, he got aura, man. He got, he got a, he walk in the room. It, Feel it. He, he walk in the room nothing. right now, everything gonna stop. He don't mm -hmm. want nothing fake around him. Yeah. He don't want no fans around him. He want everything family and genuine. He don't want, he, yeah. like he a, he a normal dude, yeah. bro. Yeah, He's super He talk normal. crazy yep. when he competing to this day. Whether he golfing, or, you know, he like to play cards and stuff. Man, I got a lot of love from Mike, man. A lot of love. When I was getting ready to do the documentary, um, my brother, uh, Deontay Thompson, we grew up together, and uh, he worked with Beast Mode Productions. And um, he was like, bro, we got to get Mike. I was like, bro, I'm not calling Mike. I'm not doing it. So he he was going back and forth for weeks. And I said, bro, I'm not calling Mike, bro. He said, bro, just call him. You got to be able to do stuff like this if we're going to make this doc do what it do. I said, all right, bro, I'll call him. So I called Larry Miller. I said, Larry, man, look, I know Mike busy. So I did that whole thing. He said, let me let me make a phone call and, and, and see what's up. He called me right back. He said, Mike, Mike wants you to call him head up. So I called him. Man, we flew out to, to North Carolina to the facility. We knocked it out. That was the easiest interview we, we did. That's how Mike is. 
Yeah. So he did us at NASCAR. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we still ain't got to sit down with him, but that's how yeah, he did us yeah, at NASCAR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like if Mike oh, Rock almost. With you, yeah, yeah, yeah. A little different, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We ain't gonna, yeah, we ain't talk yeah, to him yeah, like yeah. that, but we still yeah, waiting yeah, on the interview. We, we but he talked phone, to us. We got the yeah. and all that. He said he's yeah, fucking yeah, with us. Yeah. He said he's coming. He just ain't came yet. But this how cold Mike is though. So we we all in a like a boardroom at the facility. He coming in scanning shoes. Wow. Oh, you bet not have nothing on. Oh, you know I was good. You know I was good. Mike Bibb, he killed one of my one of my guys had on some Adidas though. Oh no. <laughs> he don't care if it's Gucci or whatever. If it ain't Jordan, it's not. They they take like people that's in that industry. Yeah. Oh, it's serious. Yeah, he take that serious. So he came in. What's up, Mike? Everybody, you know, everybody. He, what's up with your man? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what you mean? I said, bro, I told you, bro, not to wear them. <laughs> we can get him right, man. But yeah, 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 your boy good, but he got, yeah, yeah, he ain't right. He ain't right for that. You make him take his shoes off? Almost. Damn near. Almost. <laughs> Bro, we, we went to NASCAR. How the NASCAR team, just, yeah. they got on all Head to toe. A1 Jordans. I'm talking about changing tires. They take it serious. <laughs> it's crazy. They take it serious. Scuffing the he fuck out He take care of everybody, though.